Welcome to a new edition of Harness Central. I'm Harold Howe and we're here with Bill Cass. Oh, what, I guess less than 48 hours after the Breeders' Crown win with uh, the big horse. Uh, luck be with you. I <laughs> drew a blank here for a minute. <laughs> Gotta ask you right off the hop. It looked a little dicey in mid-stretch. What, what transpired there from what your driver told you? Well, listen, it was a bad night to start with. That rain came down just before the race, and I was worried, but uh, he's been good in weather. But uh, when he removed and went back to the front, and then he let Yangus go again, I said, I was worried then, but I said, uh, when he came out, and then I saw the horse move over on him in the stretch, and I saw Camel go up the rail, I said, we were worried, I said. But I said, once he straightened him up, that miracle man, that miracle man, that Pierce, he, he just pulled it off, and... Uh, he had the horse to do it, though. You, know? and you wintered in Arizona, and your team looked after things here. And as soon as you got back, we came out and did a video of your two-year-olds in training. You singled him out at that stage, and obviously you liked him a lot. Clearly, you like him a lot more now. But can you define what it is you like about him, other than the what roughly four hundred thousand he's made? Listen, he uh, he was a great-looking individual at the sale. You couldn't fault him anywhere. And being a three-quarter brother to American Jewel, like you had to go with the bloodlines and uh, and he just broke so easy. And he had a great eye in his head, you know. You couldn't fault him, he's just a good looking colt. But as a racehorse now, what is it you admire about him? Well, he's, he's, grown, in, he's grown into such a nice racehorse, you know, and uh, he's just he's easy on himself, you know. He's, he's lazy of anything, I said, uh, and uh, he, he, he's, they're getting that out of him now. You can see he's starting to get a little sharper at the gate and everything. But the biggest thing was he was lazy. Even when I sent him down to Chris Oaks and he trained him, he said, Bill, his horse is, is lazy. I said, he won't be lazy when he sees the gate. And uh, he could see that on him. For the Breeders' Crown of Pocono, you did send him to Chris Oaks. Why Chris as opposed to whoever else? Well, he had something going on here, and uh, Dr. Hennessy was working on him. And we had, him, we had him all cleaned up. We took him in on the Wednesday prior to... The race before he left Toronto and uh, he trained really well so we thought he was good and clear and then we all went to Lexington and then Howie raced him on Monday night and he was dull and I was really worried then so Hennessy and I had a talk in Lexington and he said I said if I only knew somebody in the Poconos I could send this horse to he said there's the man right there he pointed out Chris Oak so he introduced me to him and he was on the truck at 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, and he had him Tuesday afternoon. Just that good clean air. And, and he started, well, he started cleaning him up, and he, you know, he had him, he, he said he got him all straightened out for me by the end of the week, which you see, he went in 150, so. Right. He was, he was pretty clean. And then uh, I left him there for the rest of the week. I wasn't bringing him home, so. Let me ask you this now. You're aware um, that the Joe Muscara family bought 50% of he's watching. Rumor has it, has it, that's a $2 million horse. How does that price your guy? Listen, this is a first for me. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot of new things happening, I'll tell you, that I'll have to get used to. So uh, Mr. Craig will make those decisions, you know. This, right. uh, this horse now, what are you going to do with him now? His season's done, and, and what's your thoughts on looking ahead? Well, now we're sending him to Kentucky. So he'll have some grass till the 15th of January anyway. And I'm going to be in Arizona, so it's, uh, it's, that's the place to have him. You know, he'll freshen up, he'll come back with a good attitude, and uh, they look after them pretty good down there. So, right. I'm sure you've been watching the three-year-old pacing colt division this year. And I think you would agree with me, Captain Trutches has defined himself now as a great horse, if, if there were any doubt before. But it's been a very deep crop of horses, and they just pound on each other week after week. To my mind, this group of two-year-olds that uh, Luck Be With You is part of, you know, there's not there's a lot that are very close as we speak today in ability. A lot can change in eight months. But do you look forward to a three-year-old season, or do you, or do you see it as a, a summer full of potential problems? Well, listen, there's a big tough bunch of three-year-olds this year with Captain Courageous and those other horses. But I said, these ones we're racing against now are the ones we're going to race against next year. And if he develops in another year like he has this year, I won't worry about anybody. Yeah. Physically, does he strike as a horse we're going to see much change in come spring? I, I don't think. He's a smart horse. And when you have a smart horse, like I say, he's easy on himself. 
He's a good eater. He's never, never been off his food, and he's been sick a few times, but never off his food. He looks after himself really well, and I think next year he's going to just develop into a real nice three-year-old. Well, congratulations on luck to be with you, to you and owner John Craig, and uh, enjoy the winter. Thank you very much. Thanks, Harold. Harold Howe with Bill Cass, giving you the Harness Racing Edge.